and welcome to the Global Democracy Champions Summit. This Global Democracy Champions Summit is our attempt to create a forum for cross-pollination of ideas and to lift up the leadership innovations and ingenuity of democracy champions from all over the world. For those of you who don't know us, the SNF Agora Institute is an academic center and a public forum that is dedicated to improving and expanding civic engagement and informed inclusive dialogue as a cornerstone of global democracy. I founded CASEP due to the urgent need to build a multiracial global pro-democracy movement bridging American and international efforts. Our goal is to pioneer a global democracy entrepreneurship ecosystem that supports organizations through capital, network building, insight generation, and cross-border learning. We are in a moment, as you all know, where we need to unleash all of our resources, our talents, our capital, our platforms, to defend and strengthen democracy. The nature of modern autocracy is changing. The autocracies now increasingly think of themselves uh, as first of all, as working together with one another. They've learned how to share information. They've learned how to share surveillance technology. They've learned how to share tactics. They watch democracy movements all over the world and they consider them to be a mutual threat. We have this new phenomenon of elective authoritarianism where uh, some of the largest countries in the world, including mine, are uh, essentially authoritarian states, but you know they pretend democracies at the same time. And I think this is a much more dangerous situation. There used to be no such thing as social entrepreneurship. And then social entrepreneurs were like the coolest thing since sliced bread. And they were really helpful networks and financial support and peer mentoring and, and sharing across borders. I think there's a lot to learn from the social entrepreneurship movement that we need in the democracy entrepreneurship movement. For us to get back on track with democracy, that's a responsibility we have for those of us who are in government, for those of us that are uh, in philanthropy or in academia to really start to, to talk about the preservation of democracy as starting with engaging young people. Many people, especially Gen Z, millennials, uh, in 2018, the last midterm election cycle, they didn't vote because it was one third, did not vote because no one asked them to. And why didn't anybody ask them to? They didn't know how to reach them. In order for our democracies to survive and thrive, citizens need to be more actively involved in policy making. Organizing is about creating a set of practices, a culture, and the conditions for people to write a different story about themselves, to build multiracial community organizations, and ultimately to, to confront power. How are we working to create these ecosystems where researchers, we artists, we everybody in whatever space they are in and in whatever way makes sense um, is able to contribute towards advancing um, democracy and democratic values. Deliberate attempts at disinformation from foreign powers a lot of forms of more organic misinformation have a huge hold in our politics. It's figuring out how we live in this hybrid state of this online, offline existence with social media. And it starts with the humanization. It starts with being able to listen and then to humanize each other. We now have an issue where the gatekeepers, these new media technologies, social media platforms and others, give them a massive megaphone and allow them to broadcast to the entire world. An example on voting is there's all these fake news stories trying to target and, and frame black and brown communities. None of that's true, but what they do is they build this legitimacy then to pass voting laws that actually do prevent folks from voting uh, and create this larger narrative um, for communities that their votes don't matter. Belief in conspiracy theories is deeply connected to a sense of powerlessness, which is historical, often has to do with historical change, cultural change, economic change. How do we create media that empowers people? Yeah, that doesn't just beam down the truth on them from on high, but actually thinks about how it includes them, how it engages with them, and how it makes them feel part of part of a process. 
What you all are doing at the Democracy Champions Summit is what the Year of Action is all about. As civil society leaders come together with governments, the private sector, NGOs, and other groups to discuss actionable solutions to disinformation and other threats to democracies, you're ensuring multi-group collaboration, the very cornerstone of strong democracies. The way that civil society has been structured for so long has been by these sectors, has been by health, education, childhood, and adolescence, and democracy is kind of cross-cutting. How do you quantify the impact, especially as you're speaking about democracy, on years to come? Using democracy entrepreneurship to describe civil society leaders, it actually changes the frame. This is not just electoral work. This is about institution building. We are all here because we want to build, reimagine civil society organizations that are going to defend and strengthen democracy. Every generation has to apply and then reapply itself to the project of democracy. There is another side. There is a side that is against democracy. And this side is being funded massively. Even if we have goodwill, we really need massive investment. At the end of the day, a person, every person must spend two minutes, two seconds, five seconds to think what has she or he done for society today. One of the key aspects of strengthening democracy is ensuring successful collaboration between communities and the elected officials, and that's what we're going to dig into. Part of renewing our democracies and making them the inclusive democracies that we want to see, which they have never been. Right. Let's be honest with ourselves. That's right. We are, we are engaged in a project that's truly historic, that, you know, that, that means gaining new ground, not just recovering something or restoring something. That's right. And young people are vital to that. What we're trying to do with this conference is to spark a global community of learning for democracy entrepreneurs and activists, people around the globe who are working on revitalizing democracy. If one and another young person and another young person, if we come together and use the power that our numbers give us, we are able to make a difference. Young people across the country um, and across the world are often the ones who are leading social movements, um, social uprisings, and really changing the way in which government is responsive to the people. Young people really have the power to, to make change, to make a difference. We have entrepreneurs inside us, and I think everyone needs to look in the mirror and find us. Democracy neither knows color gender, ethnicity, or age, it is either you have your freedom or you do not. It is either you have the right to vote or you do not. It is either you have the ability to question your government and compel them to take action or you do not. So regardless of your background, it is absolutely important that you take part in this effort.